Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia and today we're going to be budgeting for the month of November. So the kit that I have today is my November budget kit. My shop is currently on maternity leave, but I am planning to reopen for the holidays. I believe a week before Black Friday. I'm not 100% sure, I'll definitely let you guys know. And the planner that I'm using is the Erin Condren Monthly Planner. This lacy cover, I always say that this is like my favorite cover ever. Honestly, you guys might see me reuse this time and time again. But let me go ahead and go to November. So it's definitely been some time since I budgeted on camera. Last month, I actually was able to budget, though I didn't film it. I did actually budget, which I'm really happy about. September, not so much. I believe I ended up just like laying things down but I, I didn't actually end up budgeting anything out and then for august is where i last had a video of setting things up but i didn't end up budgeting this month either it's definitely been quite a bit of a fail these past few months but it is okay it is november so i am definitely excited to get back into things especially since last month was a success but yeah so let's go ahead and get right into things so for today, I am going to go ahead and set up the November budget as well as this, as well as the savings tracker and the variable income. I will go ahead and save the weekly check-ins and the seeking funds for the next couple of videos. So to start with, let's go ahead and do the November budget. And I will also be setting up, or not setting up, but like showing you guys the apps that I use today. Since it is actually great timing, I have not done the transfers yet, so I can do that on camera with you guys. So let's go ahead and start with the washi. For this month, things have been a little bit chaotic because last month I ended up restarting over the sinking funds. So I emptied out our um, short-term savings. And if you guys want to know more about how our accounts are set up, I definitely do have um, a video. I'll link it in the description box below. But I talk about our short-term savings, long-term savings, how our checking accounts are set up, basically how all the accounts are set up and how they all work with each other since we are cashless, cashless budgeters. Um, it's it makes it easy for us to be able to keep track of our expenses as well as make sure we never have a balance on our credit card that type of stuff but yeah I ended up having to start over our sinking funds because with us not really keeping track with our budget we ended up paying very short the numbers are um, different from the last time you guys saw a sinking funds video I'm not sure by how much to be honest, but I kind of just started them from scratch and how I did that was I just took out the funds from our savings account to stuff some of our categories. But yeah, so right now I'm just putting down our headers here. One is for our income that comes in and for our income, we are um, hourly, so we're not salary based, so we do have um numbers that vary slightly when it comes to each paycheck and i'm gonna grab another one of the thin washies from the other sheets since for these ones i don't use two washies i only use one washi for each weekly check-in so i'm just gonna steal one from one of the pages as i usually do oh i probably could have waited to do that getting ahead of myself here okay <laughs> Let me go ahead and lay down the variable expenses. So for our variable expenses, they're the same every single month. I don't think I've changed it in quite some time. But the amount is slightly different this time around because our gas doesn't have to be so high since my husband is no longer commuting to work. These categories here are basically like if I were to have cash envelopes, they would be the cash envelopes. But I do have an app to reflect this portion, which I will go over with you guys and do it with you guys right after we finish the budget spread. So the first category is eating out. And then we have groceries, gas, pubs, and allowance. And for the budget for these, they really don't change but eating out is still at 300. I've tried to lessen this amount a couple of times, but I realize we eat out quite a bit and I think it has to do with us not being the best cooks. So sometimes 
you can only eat the same thing however many times we definitely do try new recipes and stuff but i do want to definitely make it a habit to start cooking more often and trying new things outside of the box for what we normally eat but these are those categories and then for the fix we're gonna have sinking funds and then ally ally is our long-term savings i always put it here even though we haven't quite been able to put anything in this account the last couple months especially because of beanie's medical bills i believe we, should, we will have more medical bills for her for this month as well since they seem to just keep coming <laughs> which kind of is annoying um i know before we gave birth i tried to look up like what people's experiences was with paying for medical bills for a baby's birth and it seriously varies so much so i guess now we're experiencing it firsthand um so my medical bill my deductible is already maxed out so the rest of the year i shouldn't have to pay anything anymore but because our baby bean bean is what we call her 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 real name is ava but because she was born she counts as her own person so all of the medical bills that come in is kind of like refreshed under her but yeah so i'll probably try to total up the amount at towards the after everything comes in just if you guys are curious so you guys will know last month one of the medical bills was like 18 1900 but we were able to empty out our hsa accounts to pay for it so the leftover amount that we had to pay was around 690 dollars but that was paid from our savings account our short-term savings um i'm probably like talking way too much i feel like i haven't talked to you guys in so long and there's so many financial changes i'm just kind of all over the place right now um but let's go ahead and continue with the bills so for this top section, um, these are kind of like our cash envelopes, what we'll spend day to day throughout the month. We'll have our sinking funds, which will be another video. And then we also have all of our bills down here. So we'll have all of our variable bills and all of our fixed bills. I like to keep these separate because I can always cut amounts from our categories if we're ever short. But I like to know that there's a certain amount that we need to cover all of our variable and fixed bills. So for fixed bills, our mortgage actually went up and this is because our escrow account went up so it looks like our new amount for the next 12 months is $2,222 which is an even amount after that I believe the amount is going to be different as well but we'll have to see um we didn't even know that the escrow account changes so this was new to us we thought that it would be however much it was prior for like ever <laughs> but I guess you learn as time goes but the next one we have is internet and this one is paid with our credit card this one's 79.99 next we have student loans for mine and my husband's i feel like i can't spell today i don't know what's going on but both of these i still have as the same amount prior to covid i don't know what the new amount will be now but that's kind of what I've stuck with. Then we have Netflix and Spotify. Both of these are paid with our credit card as well. And both of these are actually the same amount too. They're both $10.59. Then we have HOA. HOA is also still the same amount of $80.66. And then we also have HBO. And this is paid from our credit card as well. And this is $15.89. So the total for all of our fixed bills in this section here, it equals to $2,780.09. So that is the now new fixed amount for bills for the coming months unless something changes. And then we have for variable. Variable, we have utilities gas, utilities electric, mobile bill and then i have a holder and the reason why is because i like to have an even number you'll be able to see that once i total everything up let me just put this at the bottom for these i like to have estimates in here just i always overestimate because i never want to be short so i always try my best to overestimate it so gas i have it at 70 dollars electric i have it at 110 dollars for mobile i have it at 180 
and then the holder here the total is nine dollars and 91 cents and that's only because they make the number even which i'll put right here so you guys can see it but for this section all of the estimates total is 369 dollars and 91 cents for the estimated amount with a 21.8009 plus the 369 dollars and 91 cents that equals to three thousand one hundred fifty dollars and that is the amount that we need for the month of November to pay for all of our variable and fixed bills. I actually know the amount for all of our variable bills, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Of course, holder is just a holder. It's not an actual bill, so I always put a dash in there. But for gas, for this month is $65.03. For electric, is $5.21. And for mobile, is a $154.55. I honestly don't know why our electric varies so much. I think it's because sometimes they overcharge and then they correct it that way. I'm guessing that's what happens. This is how it used to be at our old apartment as well. But the total for this, for all of our actual bills, all three of these numbers combined, is $224.79. So I will go ahead and finish this off at the end of the month with the results video, but this is what all the bills look like and this is what all of our other expenses look like so far. Gas also comes out of credit cards, so I just want to put that in there. The reason why I put the C's in here is to help me remember which bills come out of credit card. The reason why we have bills hooked up to credit card is because we get rewards. We get like 2% um, cash back. If the bill allows us to hook up a credit card to it and there's no additional fee or anything like that, we're already having to pay the bill so we're like why not have it hook up to the credit card so we can get two percent off in a sense every single month because we get that cash back anyway so that's kind of why we do that if i could i would have all of our bills hooked up because that's two percent cash back off of everything every single month which would be really nice but yeah that's kind of why we do that last month we actually cashed out again for our rewards so just to let you guys know how much it was it was $130.52 and then the last time we cashed out prior to October it was back in July for July we cashed out again for $186.40 so that was kind of like three ish three ish months ish but that's kind of my idea of like the cash rewards that's why I always try to max out and charge whatever I can to the credit card because as long as you don't have a balance that carries over it um, you end up just getting money back from it. But anyway, so I went ahead and put all the lines down. And then I, I also put actual down here. But this is what it's looking like so far. And I think it's really, really cute. So I'm excited to see what the other spreads look like. Now let's move on to the variable income. The variable income, I really just lay down the stickers. And then I write down the paycheck numbers. I put the paycheck numbers in a different book that I have kind of like... A reminder of what the amounts was for each month since this one I always show on camera and I'm not quite ready to show what our income is for the variable income I like to put our paychecks because we are hourly and our amounts are not always the same and because it is both me and my husband's paychecks um, I like to put all of them here because like if I put it on the main spread everything just would not fit so that's kind of why I just throw everything on this side. So I have a finalized number that I can just bring over. And I have a general and I have an extra because I consider our paychecks as the general. And then for extra would be like, for example, when we cashed out those rewards, that would be extra. But that's kind of what it's like. And then we have variable income. And I'm just going to put one strip down here. So that is what that looks like. And I always just put four dots down here because the rest of them I use for the savings spread. So the savings tracker spread I'm going to do with you guys on camera as well. And these little dots here is what I use so I can remind myself like if we took out funds earlier from our paychecks or if we got additional money but like 
I didn't calculate in the budget, for example. I believe for last month, since I went on maternity, I got the short-term maternity check in, but I put that whole thing in savings. So that's kind of what this I put loan notes in here for. Same thing with like uh, when we redeemed the cash amount, we, we added it to our long-term savings immediately. So this was not in our budget. And then of course, when we paid for Beanie's medical bill, that's not calculated in here either, but I wanted to note in here that we paid for it with savings. So that's kind of what this is for. It's not every month that I have something for it, but whenever I do, it's nice to have this area to put it down. Okay, so I went ahead and put the little lines in here too, but that is what the variable income spread is looking like, and this is what the November budget looks. Now let's go ahead and do our savings. So for the savings, I haven't been fully filling it out. I normally do, but I wanted to show you guys. So for last month, this is what it looked like. Um, I, how I use this is I put any type of transactions from our long-term savings in here. And then I also have a buckets for them. So for Ally, if you have it, you're able to separate them into categories without opening additional accounts. It's all in one account, but it's kind of like you can categorize and budget out what you'd like. I have in total eight categories, but I'm just going to keep two private for now. But we have one for offense, emergencies, for our baby, for pups, our home, and our new car. I think I'm going to tell you guys a, a goal that we have for each one in this spread. But this is kind of what it looks like, and then you get to fill out the amounts. But this really helps kind of like keep me excited to be able to hopefully save up and to be able to reach those goals but right now i think financially <laughs> we're a little all over the place um but anyway so let me go ahead and lay down this thick washi and then also when i reopen um i know a couple of you have asked for these to be a la carte so i am going to make all the budget sheets a la carte instead of bundled together so you're able to choose which one especially now that i have a new machine i'm able to kind of cut more but that's a different story because before i only had one so it was kind of a pain in the butt especially when it kept acting up on me now it should be a little bit easier and then for savings how where did i put this one last because i really like the spacing of it so it looks like i put it right here that's probably not the best way to remember but i used to also track our short-term savings in here which is why i have like the account in here so if it was with different institutions or if i have a different name for it i could always just put it in here in the transaction in here in here but I'm going to go ahead and use this last washi on this sheet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip a line. And then the remaining eight categories I have here. So just go ahead and put them on. So this sheet is now done. And then I'm going to also finish out this sheet as well. I always forget where I put this little sticker. I guess I'll just put it here. <laughs> These stickers are all on matte removable paper as well, so you're able to kind of pick them up if you ever make a mistake. Let's go ahead and finish out these dots. So for eight categories, I'm going to do eight dots. I believe you can have up to 10 categories, but I don't use that many. Or at least not yet, I don't have that many. So I'm gonna just do this for now. And I don't know if these dots are being placed the most even, but that is fine with me. And then I'm going to use this one more washi for this. This last washi I'm going to save for another another spread because I do end up using all of the washies, all the thin and thick washies. Okay. Okay, so I wouldn't put all my lines down, but let's go ahead and fill this out. So our first one is fence. Our goal to be able to have a fence, and we got an estimate last time, but I want to estimate more just in case. So I believe the amount we're estimating at is for 7000 And this is just so we have the whole entire backyard fence off, and we, and it's also due to the type of fence, and we also want like the privacy one. But it's been like a couple, it's been ever since we moved into this house, so we'll see how long it takes. But that is what our goal is, and the current amount I'm going to keep private, but the current amount we have in there, I would put here. 
There's also a percent option inside of the app. You can also click on it to see what percent you're at of reaching that goal. So I like to put that percent here as well. The next one we have is emergencies. And for emergencies, our goal is at 30,000. And the reason why is that 30,000 is because I kind of times um, 5,000 by six months in the amount in there. I'm also going to leave blank as well as the percentage. The next category that I have is for bean. Our goal for bean was 8,000, but that's also because I had no clue how much medical bills would be, especially with all of like the numbers that I kept looking up. It ranged from like $50 for like 10,000. So I'm, I just put 8,000. But now that we're starting to get an idea of how much everything's costing, um, I lowered this down to 4,000 but I'm still trying to make do with not touching this account. That's why we keep touching our short-term savings. In our short-term savings, we like to try to keep at a thousand, but when it's emptied out, we try to replenish it, that type of thing. The short-term savings is inside of our main account. It's attached to all of our checking accounts, so it's just easy to make transfers, while Ally is a different institution. So as you guys might know, a different institution, it might take three to five business days for transfers, but that's kind of why it's set up like this. And of course, going back to that video, I definitely talk about those accounts way more in here, just to explain how everything works. The next account that we have is for pups. And for this account, I have a goal for... 1500 and this is just because we have two pups and just in case there's anything that they we need for them we have this in here to be able to pay for any type of emergencies for them the amount after that we have this for home we have a goal of i'm missing a zero <laughs> we have a goal of five thousand I honestly don't know what amount is good to have as an emergency or kind of like a holder for a home because um, Dustin's family was saying like a roof can cost like $10,000 if you ever have to replace a roof or replace like the air conditioner or any type of anything related to the home but I just put 5000 just to have something in there though I have no idea what is a good number. Next we have a new car. For this one we have a goal of 25000 Now I know this number is absolutely ridiculous like I kind of just have this in here because <laughs> I just wanted a number in here. The reason why I picked a number so high is because I don't want our monthly payments to be high because we wouldn't be able to afford it if it was like multiple hundreds of dollars so that's kind of why it, the more we have a down payment for it the lower our monthly payments will be so that's kind of why i have this in here though i don't have any calculations we wouldn't even know what we want as a second car so that's kind of what the amount is in there just so we have something to save towards and then that's kind of it oh no i have one more the only the last one i wanted to keep private but the la next one was vacations and then for vacations, we have 3000 as a goal for right now. Though, I think this number might change. I don't, I don't even know what type of vacation we'll be going on, but it's just something to save for us to take a family vacation. I won't really know like an exact amount until we actually have a destination, um, but we won't be traveling anytime soon. So this is just an amount. So whenever we're ready to go, hopefully we already have the money saved or we would already have a start to start saving for what we need but that is what the savings tracker looks like and this is how i separate out all the categories so of course i'll have like the total amount in this savings account and then i'll have the breakdown of how much is in each category like if there's like a hundred dollars here i'll have it a hundred dollars towards the seven thousand and that percentage I don't even know what it would be, but that's kind of what this will look like in the breakdown of it. And then for my dashboard over here, I usually have this set up. And I have a blank spread to show you guys what this will look like. But this is how I usually have a set up. I have like the amounts on here. Or the amounts for my husband's 401k, for my 401k, for our HSAs. This is now zeroed out for both to pay for Beanie's birth, her medical bills. So this is now empty. But... The third category was for our student loans for both of us, how much was in each. Then I had the summary of how much we spent, how much we saved, how much our bills were for that month. And the little recaps of for this month, we had to pay car maintenance. We had to pay for our pup's food renewal, upcoming for car insurance, the sewer bill, and then of course a tracker for our credit score. It's definitely good to track our credit score because like you never know what 
can happen so you want to make sure everything looks right on there but that is what the dashboard will look like when we set it up but that is actually it for this budget with me or monthly plan with me monthly budget with me <laughs> it's been some time for sure the next video that i'll have will probably be the sinking funds video to set up our sinking funds and then of course we'll have the weekly check-ins ah that is right i need to also set up the apps with you guys for the apps that we use and this is ashley being right here she's so cute i'm so obsessed with her oh my gosh i miss her so much right now but for the apps that we use it's the same ones they have not changed at all so one of them is the daily budget and the other one is the multi-budget for the daily budget it's the same thing as before where like i just use this to track our expenses in here so so far for the month we spent 34 dollars. but i'll go more in this when we do our weekly check-in but for right now our multi-budget let's go ahead and reset this so and both of these apps are free. I've tried so many different apps and these are just the two that I find the easiest for me to utilize. I don't have to set up or hook up any bank accounts to. But after I, I switch this out, I go ahead and put all the five categories in this app because this is, this is kind of like my virtual my virtual envelopes <laughs> to be able to keep track of how much I spend. I used to not use this app, but sometimes I'll run into times where I don't remember how much we have left in a certain category. So this is what helps me out. So we have eating out, groceries, allowance, gas, and pups. And then the amount for each is 300 for eating out. We have 400 for groceries. Allowance is 100. Gas is 150. And then pups is $50. So that's kind of what this will look like. And I don't like that that has a negative, so I just enter in whatever amount it says is missing. Like this doesn't really do anything, it just zeroes it out, to be honest. But this is how the categories look. So as we spend money, I can put like, we spent $20 and it'll deduct the $20 from there. So that's kind of what this is for. Just for me to keep a track of these envelopes, but you definitely don't have to use this. It's just something that really helped me. But now we will conclude this video. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in and thank you guys so much for bearing with me. I know I was a bit all over the place. <laughs> um, it's definitely been a minute. There's definitely lots to catch up with with you guys. But I hope you guys have an amazing day. Happy November and hopefully I'll see you guys on my next video. Bye!